Are you tired of blowing your prop firm accounts? And whether you're trading a live account or a challenge account, we still need to be able to manage our risk effectively. Now, one thing we don't want to do as traders is pay maybe four, five hundred pounds for a hundred k challenge or something like that, only to go and blow it because we've not managed our risk wisely, and then have to pay out another four, five hundred pounds or however much you're spending on your prop firm challenges. So, if we were able to effectively manage our risk in such a way that we should never reach our maximum drawdown, this would be an ideal situation for a lot of traders. Now, this particular approach is what I do with my prop firm challenges and my live prop firm accounts. Now, just like most of you, I have been there. I have failed prop firm challenges. I've even lost live funded accounts. So I do understand the pain that you go through when this happens, as it is a large chunk of money just to pay for a hundred thousand pound challenge or maybe a 10K challenge, depending on your circumstances. So how do I manage my risk? Well, effectively, if I'm at break even, so I have zero drawdown, I am risking roughly half a percent to 1% risk per trade. Now, at some point, we're likely going to encroach some kind of drawdown, but if my account ever gets to minus 5% drawdown, which it has before, I am never really concerned because of the way that I manage my risk. So if I get to minus 5% drawdown, I'm then starting to reduce my risk by half. So if I was risking half a percent when I was at break even, I would then half that to 0.25% risk. If I was risking 1%, I would then risk half a percent risk. Now there has been times in the past, obviously if we're getting closer to that maximum drawdown, where my drawdown has then exceeded 5%, and I'm encroaching around about the 7% mark, I then half my risk once again. So if I started off risking half a percent when I was at break even, if I'm at 7% drawdown, I would then reduce that down to 0.125%. And if I was risking 1%, I would then reduce it down to 0.25%. Now, when I then get to the point where I'm at 8% drawdown, that's when I would half it again, and this would just be a flat rate regardless wherever I'm trading at, whether I started at 1%, half a percent, I would then reduce it down to 0.07% risk. And if for any reason my account goes below this 8% drawdown, I would then once again half that, but then shorten the intervals. So if I approach 9% drawdown, I would half it to 0.04% risk, and if I then reach 9.5% drawdown, lower that risk again, and then keep doing that. That way, it should be very, very difficult for you to then blow a challenge or even lose your funded accounts. Now, if you've traded personal funds, you should understand that trading a prop firm, the risk management is different. You only have, for the majority of prop firms, a maximum of 10% drawdown. Now, you don't have that with your personal funds. So with a personal account, your risk management would likely be quite different. So you might not have anything as aggressive as this to preserve your capital. However, it still would be a good idea to manage your risk appropriately, even with your own personal funds. Now, it's not just going to be about how much we risk per trade. If you do encroach the area where you're, maybe you're at 7% drawdown or maybe or very close to that threshold of losing your account, it's very likely you've had quite a lot of losing trades and you are not currently in a positive risk reward in comparison to how many trades you have taken. And this would be a great opportunity when you get to this level of drawdown to maybe take a step back, have a look at all of your trades and scrutinize all of your trades to ensure that every single trade is fit in your plan. And if the plan has been met for every single trade, you can then start to diagnose whether there is an issue with the strategy or it could just be a rough period of trading throughout that year. It's important to realize that if you start to scrutinize your previous trades, you need to be able to establish whether this is just a small period of time that has just been a very difficult trading period or whether there is actually problems with your trading strategy. Now, there is a couple of ways that we can deal with that if that is the case. That will be something I will cover it in a later video because that will be a topic of itself. Now, this risk management approach is something that I do teach with inside my community and it's something I very strongly encourage people to adopt. Now, some of the criticisms I've had about my risk management approach has always been, oh, but it's going to take a long time for me to pass my challenge. That should not be of any concern at all. There should be no rush 
to pass your challenge within a couple of days, couple of weeks or months. If it takes you six months to pass a challenge, then so be it. If it takes you one year to pass a challenge, then so be it. It's not a competition to see who can pass their challenge or get funded the quickest. We're talking about trading here. Trading is a long-term game. We want to maintain longevity. Because these people that you see all over Instagram, all over YouTube that have passed their challenges in maybe one or two trades or in a few days, there's a very high chance that they are likely going to lose that account. But you will not see that on social media. So the only competition you have as a trader is with yourself. Don't compete with anyone else. Don't try to get the biggest prop firm payout ever. There's no point trying to pass your challenge in as quick as possible. Maintain your risk, stay disciplined and trade safe.